Hey guys, Ryan here from the Private Banking Forum. Um, just doing my live daily journal update. It's currently um, 25 to 12 Eastern Time. I thought I'd uh, take a different approach on my video today. Um, I mean, I've become a victim of my own uh, trading today, and um, so I thought I'd just run through this and just show you guys my thought process, the thought process, thought process I should have had, and the current situation in the S&P 500. So from the top, I'm going to go through what I did this morning and how I approached the day. So from off the open this morning, if you bear with me, I'm going to pause this video for two seconds and I'm going to get a screenshot off of the of the trade I took off the open. Okay, so this is the trade I took off the open. So off of the open, I could see that we had buy-in, responsive buy-in overnight. We had long overnight inventory, and um, we had a pullback into the open. So what I was focusing on was the two distributions. I mean, for the fact that we had made um, a lot higher value, we put an all-time new high in the overnight session, and um, we had this balance the, in the more all, in the overnight session, and we broke out to the upside and formed a second balance area up here at the all-time highs. So what I was thinking into the open was, um, is that we were going to see a new high put in. I was thinking that we were going to um, that we were going to test the overnight high at least. I didn't know if we were going to put in a new higher high, but I thought we were going to at least come in and try test this uh, 43 level at this upper distribution. So off of the open, I was looking at these two volume profiles for the overnight inventory. So we had the lower volume profile, the upper volume profile, and then the excess in between it. So into the open, we see a pullback to RTH profile and into an inside day off the overnight high from yesterday. And what I wanted to see was, or what I was looking for was responsive buy-in at, um, at the lows of this upper distribution and the rejection of the outside day from yesterday. And um, so I started to position myself long at the, at the um, at VWAP um, with a stop inside of um, this excess here. So we, we did get responsive buy-in and I got scaled out for my two points and the market sold off. Pretty sharp, pretty solid. And I got stopped out. I mean, I've put on my Twitter feed, as um, soon as I got scaled out, I've put in my stop just below the RTH lows for the current pro, uh, for the current distribution that we had in place. So um, I got pretty, I got in pretty close to the lows, so I ended up only taking a, about a point stop on this. Um, so overall, I made two points on this trade, and um, and that was that. And then the market sold off. We sold off pretty hard into the value area high here, and then we see another rotation down to VWAP. And I started. To, I established a long position here. I established long position from this area at, um, at 62s. So if we look at this on the um, on the on the current TPOs, what I was leaning off at the time was um, was the value area higher from a previous day and um, from Wednesday and the, the distribution low from yesterday, which we saw excess. Um, which we saw excess in. So I was basically just trying to lean off of this lower distribution from yesterday, and I got nailed here <laughs> pretty quick. And after this, um, I've I've just not traded no more today. I'm just calling it a day. So this is why I thought I'd run through um, these vid this video of of what really was happening here and the thought process and logic behind today. So first of all, I'm going to stop. I'm going to start from a a higher time frame. I mean. I could start from a monthly and I could start from a yearly, quarterly VWAP and all this sort of stuff, but I don't think it's relevant in this situation because this is longer term analysis. But let's go from the monthly chart quickly. I mean, we've seen this breakout of this bracket. We've um, we've we've rallied higher into the end of the month. We see this excess into the month uh, last month's um, finish, and then this month we've pretty much seen balance in this upper distribution. So. At this, at this other, at this excess. So um, at the beginning of the month, I was thinking, oh, well, this could be an all-time high, and we could see this excess hold, and we could see responsive selling. But we didn't. We've seen, we've seen pretty much balance in this, and acceptance of this higher value here. So the longer-term picture is still, is still bullish. But at the minute, we're trading the interday time frame. So I'm going to tackle things from an interday perspective here. So starting with, um, with the daily moving averages. I mean, this is a this is a Globex. Um, these are Globex hours, so this is a uh, not outcry hours. And we can see here that the um, the S and P is very is overextended at the moment. We've seen this pullback off of the last high, and we've seen this rally to a new high. 
and um, but the moving averages are all bullish and we are sitting on top of all the moving averages and the, currently the 10 EMA is currently holding the support we keep coming down and testing this level and we keep finding buyers so until we break down here and come down and test the 20 this is a this is a key support level this 10 moving average so the path of least resistance on the on this time frame is still to the upside even though we're very overextended and we're um and we're uh, we look pretty much oversold here the path of least resistance is still up from these support levels until these break down and we continue to come down and test lower moving averages like I said, this is key support. So that was one heads up for today. Obviously, we opened up at the highs with no support below us regards moving averages. So that's just one thing to take note of here. Now I'm going to go into an RTH pit session overview of top-down analysis. And at the minute, we can currently see that um, from the last uh, pullback, we opened up very bullish with an open excess gap the next day. We've started to one time frame higher. We opened it again, gap up. This is aggressive buying at the, at the previous all-time highs. So, like I said to you in my journal yesterday, this is expensive prices. Forget about this upper pro uh, profile for the minute. F pretend that this doesn't exist. So, until we we break above this this all-time high, then these prices are considered higher. So, if we had opened here on this day then you would have wanted to be a seller down because until we break out these prices are too high once we break out the, this market comes in price exploration mode again and you and these become cheaper prices anyway back to what I was saying so we open gap up above the all-time highs above the previous day's highs and um, and we and we, we started to grind higher again we started to see more one time frame come into the market a small balance area came in and then one time frame and came back into the market to a new all time high where we started to balance again at these all time highs again so at the minute we had a mini mini bracket consolidation balance area here we one time framed higher above it and we formed a new bracket balanced balancing area up here so at the minute you want to buy the lows and you want to sell the highs until we break out of a new directional move. Once we break out of this directional move, we want to um, below. You want to be a seller, and likewise, if we open up above, then you want to be a buyer. So going back into today and what we saw, um, I mean, I tried to buy these all-time highs with. I pretty much got reeled into the fact that we saw um, a, a new high put in overnight, and we saw balance up here. So, this is why I got reeled in thinking that we were going to at least test the overnight highs up here at 74. And um, I was wrong. And uh, I should have been a seller here. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I have to <laughs> draw myself into this psychologically and emotionally. Um, but again, if we open gap up, and then we could have come, and then I would have either looked for an open auction just to buy it, or I would have looked for an open test drive where the market would have come down, tested this high these highs as support and carried on to rally but the fact is is if we look at this um, if we look at this in a bit more detail today on how we did open we opened at the highs inside of the current trading range I mean this is the current trading range that we were in and we opened at the highs inside of it we didn't open gap up we didn't open bullish we opened at the highs with support above us. So what does the market do? The market rotates higher and we find responsive sellers to, to sell this back in. And it was really, really obvious, to, really, really obvious, but at the time you just get drawn into all of the all of the information and all the excitement and all of the other all the other stuff you see on the news and whatever. Do you know what I mean that's what happens. So I mean looking at this logically, this would this if you if you were to have been prepared for this then like I should have been this morning then I should I could have took advantage of this move I mean at the moment these are my support levels so I mean we're pretty much in this 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 is the this is the the, the, the key support levels where the market keeps rotating to so from here if we open up here we want to be a buyer and if we open up here we want to be a seller until this is um, broken with force and we've accepted these higher prices then that's just the name of the game at the minute just just sell the highs and buy the lows. It's really that simple. Once you identify these key structural references, so as you can see today, we opened inside of of the all-time highs. RTH, 
we see a small rotation above it where we see the response to selling and we've come all the way down to um to this key area again i mean we are finding buyers at the, minute at the 52s but it wouldn't surprise me if we come down and tested this 50s um here I mean, we still got um we're still out of balance and we're still um we're still rotating down here so we could see an uh, um another rotation here from 58s down to 50s so uh, 56s sorry down to 50s just uh just something to keep in um in 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 the thought process here i mean again if we look at the the um the weekly vwaps um We've just been very rotational. I mean, value has been moving higher, and we're still in an uptrend. But I mean, the week has been two. The weeks have been seeing two-way trade. I mean, this is show. This VWAP here is showing an imbalance to the buy side, and we can see clear one time, uh, clear one balance in. Uh, sorry, clear out of balance market to the buy side, where on the last three weeks we can see clear two-way trade. I mean. We've established a value area and we've come up above it. We found sellers, we've come below it, we found buyers. We've just seen two way trade in this market. Again, last week we see the same situation, and this week we've seen the same situation. So, um, it's just one thing to keep in mind here, um, regards this current market situation where we are still we are seeing two way trade balancing in this market still. So, I mean, for me to be a buyer today at these all time highs at the highest price, like I said in my journal yesterday, was stupid. <laughs> it was really stupid of me, and I should have, I should have been, I should have been ready to take advantage of this move today and this volatility that has come into the market. But because I was unprepared and I didn't have the, the correct thought process in place that I should have had, I ended up paying the price for it and missing opportunities. And um, that really annoys me. <laughs> so that is why I'm doing this video to help you guys and to help myself, so I can come back and re watch this video and and make sure that um, I, f I, I'm, I have the correct thought process next time. So, I mean, just because of this, what I'm saying to you today, it doesn't mean every time we get this same sort of scenario that the market's going to hold the highest and sell it. I mean, it's just the probabilities are, with the way we opened and the, and the, the, the clues the market was giving us, that this market was going to sell off and we were going to see what happened today. I mean... Nine times out of ten it will work, but I mean, sometimes you're wrong. It doesn't always work. Sometimes we open and we just get responsive buying off of the open. Someone is willing to buy this and buy, pay these high prices. It could be an institution, it could be a hedge fund, it could be a bank. Who knows who it is doing it? But no one was there willing to buy these high prices today. So what they do, they sell it down and then they buy the pullback. So um, it's just simple logic, but it's just being prepared and having the right thought process and doing the right thing at the right time. Um, I mean, if we look at this uh, from the composite, the comp current composites and VWAPs that I'm tracking at the minute, I mean, clearly you want to be buying value and then you want to be selling above value. It's simple logic, buying in value and selling above value. And, th and today, I was trying to buy these highs right at the edge of this current distribution composite. I mean, it's just suicide. <laughs> it's just suicide if you ask me doing what I did today. I mean if we had a different scenario where we opened up here at the highs and we had the moving averages sitting below us then that would be a, a different scenario but the fact is we opened up higher at the highs with the moving averages below us and and value below us so obviously what we're going to do we're going to um we're going to revert back to value and to the mean I mean it's clear as clear as daylight on my composites at the moment and again, this is why I'm annoyed because I should have took advantage of this today. Um, I'm being humble. I mean, it's just you can't get it right every day, and um, I I'm still very young, and I'm still learning every day, every single day. I'm sure even Ben, doing this for 15 years, is still learning and is still humble about um, his education here. Um, that's what we are as traders. We have to continuously better ourselves. We have to continuously be on on the ball and make and be better than our components because we have to beat our components to to do well in this in this market so anyway let's have a look here this is the current distribution that I have in place for this current market and this is the current value and what did we do we opened above value at the highest we opened here so we rotate above it and then we sell off right the way back to value and if we look at this was the first thing that it did did is we we sold off to the value area higher we see a small bounce and then the B period we see a sell down all the way to the point of control we saw a small bounce. More sellers came in, they sold all the way down to the value area low. We saw a small bounce. Then the next lot of sellers came in and sold it through value and we tested the previous value area and the lower and the below the current value that the market is accepting. And now we're starting to find responsive buying. 
So now I'm expecting two-way trades to come in. I'm expecting this sort of uh, this level to hold and then just two-way trades come back in a into this market. I wouldn't be surprised if we come up and test this 7766, uh, this 1766 area today possibly. Um, who knows? But um, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, we are pretty. We have seen pretty strong one time framing, but we are starting to see a consolidation here. I mean, you can see it that here we had no TPOs building, and now all of a sudden we're starting to see distribution form where price has been accepted, and we are finding two way trade in this market. So, one thing to remember with the S and P 500 is Ben's told me this before. It's a very very calculated market. It's very very calculated, and you can see here how calculated it is because this is just a current composite, and you can clearly see how the market respects these levels as we continue to trade. So um, so yeah, I ho uh, hopefully this um this helps you. I mean, if we if we merge this together now, we can see we got nice excess at the highest of this uh of this uh this composite distribution, and um and we are continuing to accept this higher value now. So be interesting to see when this actually finally decides to break out and we see someone come in and start to buy this market up again but at the minute it seems um we're just balancing with two way trade and um it's just we we have it we have extremes in place i mean this is a typical thing with 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 a trend um what the trend will do is we will we will move and then we'll consolidate and then we'll get a directional move and then it's just um just how it works. So um, at the minute, like from this example, I mean, this is obviously a day time frame chart. We've seen this one time frame in, and now we're starting to balance here. And what we will do is, um, is we'll just trade in this range and we'll establish in extremes, and then something will change. We'll see some sort of change, and then they'll and it will break out of this, and we'll we'll start exploring a new area, which we where we'll develop a range, a higher low, and we'll start to bracket or we'll start to trend it. But this is just um, how the markets. Uh, work they're just very efficient and um and it's just knowing how to uh how to tackle each day as they come with the clues that the market have provided but like i said at the minute this is the we have a bracket forming we have an overall bracket which i have in place which is not really formed but it's a potential bracket that could form and we have a and we have a bracket formed at the highs here so at the minute sell the highs buy the lows buy the lows sell the highs and once we break out we go back into price exploration mode in the next directional move and then the next directional move or one time frame then we'll start to balance again we'll sell off and then we'll come down to an area which, which we find um, the buyers and sellers accepting uh, value here and then we'll we'll bracket again and it's just a continuous cycle of doing this all the time right so um so yeah that's just um the video that I, I chose to do today and um I hope that this helps you guys out and uh, I mean I could go into a, into a lot more detail like with the quarterly values and um, and everything but I just thought of obviously approaching this from a day time frame perspective of how we should have approached the open today we should have been a seller and, um, and sold this back down and if we were wrong then um, we would have seen responsive buy and then we could have re-established a longer position off of value so anyway I hope this helps and um, if you have any questions, then please ask me on my journal on the forum. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye.